After finishing my tiny desk build, I realized I needed a little bit more storage and I needed a place for my scan snap printer and some pullout drawers to hold all my knickknacks as well as files that I like to keep around. Drawers and making a file storage situation can be a little intimidating, so I'm gonna walk you through exactly how I went through that today on Faulkner Makes. I've been in a really thrifty mood lately in these builds and I'm trying to reuse as much as possible. So you might recognize this piece. Actually, I'm not sure if anyone would recognize a piece of plywood, but anyway, this piece of plywood came from a rebuild I did of the south side of my shop. You can check out that video here. And in that video, I took this apart and it just carried a whole bunch of stuff on French cleats. And it's a really fine piece of three quarter inch ply. And so it was enough that I could break it down and use it as the cabinet carcass. It wouldn't work for the drawers. You'll see that in a bit. And I found some scraps I could use for that. But it was enough to be able to cut my pieces and get that carcass together. Here's the plan. So we originally were going to put the printer and the scan snap on top of the whole cabinet. But putting the printer inside not only kind of cleaned up the top there, but just allowed the scan snap to be on its own. Additionally, I originally started with two bigger drawers, the top two drawers, but I made those a little bit thinner once I realized that I just wanted to put some basic pens and pencils and kind of general desk and office knickknacks in there. I'm not going to walk through all of the dimensions and everything. You can obviously see them on the screen. You could pause it if you want. This is a really specific build for just my office but it'd be really easy to adapt to your office needs because it's just a rectangle and all I did was miter the top piece at 45 degrees to connect with the side pieces. The bottom piece is just butt jointed with pocket screws. Then I found being the thrifty person that I am right now, a piece of quarter inch plywood that was sitting around my shop and I mark that, find the dimensions and I'm gonna put that into the back of the box by cutting out a groove. Now a really super helpful tip that's probably really obvious, so bear with me, is marking out that groove on the back side of your boards because nothing's more painful than cutting out that groove and realizing it's on the wrong side. So just taking that extra second to mark it is gonna be super helpful. Then I just take it over to the table saw and rip that groove with my standard eighth inch blade and I just move it over in a couple passes to get to that quarter inch. And then you see me here just ripping down that plywood back to size. And even though there's a lot of feelings out there on pocket screws, they work really well for cabinet making and they're fast and they're strong. So, you know, forget the feelings. Once I have those pocket screws in, I have to go onto the miter top. Some folks would say I need biscuits or dominoes here to connect it, but it's plywood, it's not hardwood. So there's not gonna be this some kind of movement and you can see with my super powerful finger to glue technique, this is going to be just fine for connecting the overall structure, adding a little bit more glue and then some strapping tape will give this plenty of rigidity in addition to the shelf that now has those pocket screws in it, which is gonna hold the bottom together. And with those miters secured, like a Josh Allen slide for a first down, let's be serious, he'd never slide, he'd jump over someone. Allen, he's gonna take over, he hurdles and picks up the first down. You can put that back in to those grooves and then check your bottom panel with a double square or just a normal square or your finger and then secure those pocket screws. And there you have it, a basic box. Now, if you are a hobbyist woodworker like me, and you're trying to think about whether or not you want to build those things that you could just buy at Ikea, this is a really good first project to figure out if you can make a square box, and uh, if it's something you enjoy doing, of course, and it is really the premise of a lot of other things, like if you're making a sideboard, if you're making cabinets, if you're making any kind of things like that, you can figure out if it's worth doing, first of all, and if you like to do it. Here then you can see that I'm marking out where that shelf's gonna go that's gonna support the printer. I again use pocket holes because like my pants, I like pockets and I just figure this will be quick, easy and effective for holding up a printer. I like to use clamps just as an extra hand. You can get these little you know, grip clamps from anywhere and they're super handy to have around. And then just securing the screws gives you a nice shelf. 
And after a couple hours, once that glue is definitely dry, you take off the strapping tape and give it a good sand. It's plywood, and so things can chip out a lot. So just give it a really good sand and make sure it's as nice as you want it. And although a lot of trend right now is to keep that plywood edge looking pretty, I am covering that up with a DAP wood grain filler so that I can paint it white because that's the aesthetic I'm going for. I then set in a little toe kick at the bottom and I just secured that with some CA glue and spray and clamp it on to make sure it's really secure. And it's not gonna go anywhere. CA glue and plywood are like best friends and they hang out all the time forever. They can never break up. And so when it's done on plywood, even with a little solid wood, it's gonna hold really well. Then it's out to the blistering sun of Portland, Oregon, where temperatures that day were like 130 degrees Celsius. I applied all of the white paint to make it look pretty and moved forward to the drawer build. Now here's where you might start saying, Dan, you goofball, you used pocket screws for the overall frame and now you're cutting in half blind dovetails. What is the deal? And I don't know, I just decided to make it more complicated than it was and made half blind dovetail drawers here using a Porter Cable jig. It's really easy to put them together and to cut them out. The one thing I didn't love is whatever, for whatever reason, this veneer was really chipping out on me. I even did a, some finishing kind of passes to make sure it wouldn't chip out, but it decided to chip out. But once you actually cut out the drawers, box them together, what's really nice is you end up with a really nice 90 degree boxes, which is the whole point of boxes. But you can tell I got back to the lazy train and I decided just to screw together the bottom drawer, which become the file cabinet. Then my favorite technique for putting in the bottom of boxes is to use a rabbiting bit on my router table lift. This allows for a nice quarter inch inset into the boxes and then I can take a piece of quarter inch plywood and just set it in there after rounding it over on the rigid belt sander. And then like a plop in the night you just pop it right in, put on some glue, add some nails, and you've got a box which becomes a drawer once you add drawer slides. Now Real talk here, I'm a big fan of ball bearing drawer slides, but also as it's become the theme of this video, I was feeling thrifty and I had these Euro slide drawer slides and I was like, whatever, I'm gonna just use these and I wish I had just gone with what I should have gone with, which were those ball bearing slides. I struggled to put these in. The measurements are the same. You still want to measure your box to be a half inch on either side, so an inch total smaller than the opening of your box, if that makes sense. And then you install the slides on the case and then on your drawer. And really it works fine, but I just found them really painful to adjust when you're really trying to get that dialed in smoothness of the runner. So I don't recommend them. They are not Faulkner makes recommended. I'm gonna keep using the ball bearing slides. That's just my jam. Then it was up to making what makes this really a pretty build, which is having the white oak front of the drawers. So I had to chop those down at the miter saw and then joint one edge before ripping the other edge at the table saw. And I then took those over to glue and make sure that I could have one panel that looks really nice all together. That way I could also make for the larger bottom drawer front because obviously you can tell that that would not cover it as one piece as it currently exists. And while I did the most exciting thing, which is to wait for glue to dry, I was able to measure out how the file folder hanging system was gonna work. And what I did here is I just used some white oak scraps. After marking in the depth and the measurement of the folders, which ended up being 12 and a quarter in case you're trying to do your own here. I then just cut out where I had marked from the scrap so that it could have basically two runners along the top. I used my router table again just to smooth that over and then um, ran the box upside down over the table saw. Now, I don't know, it felt totally safe to do it. Looking back at it on video, I'm like, was that safe? I don't know. Um, you know, if it works, it's fine. If it doesn't, you go to the hospital. And then I can test that those already cut runners fit in there and hand cut them down to size just to make sure it's a perfect fit. And when I realize it is a perfect fit, I can give myself a thumbs up, which is actually kind of a big compliment in the woodworking community. 
Sorry if that's too dark. And then I can finally take it back over to the cabinet to make sure that that fits in there. And then move back on to those drawer fronts. Drawer fronts are pretty straightforward. It's really about making sure that those pieces are square and then giving yourself, you know, anywhere from a 16th to an eighth inch gap between those drawers so that they don't bind when they, you know, obviously open and close on your cabinet. I use a technique that I've seen a lot of other folks use, which is just having a deck of cards. You can kind of place them there add in your shelves, make sure the spacing's correct, and then use some clamps to secure them to the drawer front. And then you can take it out, flip it over. It's nice if you have the edge of your work surface so that when you land those screws in there, you're gonna get a really secure fit. I don't recommend gluing the drawer front to the drawer box unless you're absolutely certain on your fit. But I find that there's always times where you need to adjust that, you need to rotate that, and it's easier to shift out the drawer front then really just play around with the overall drawer and the slides. There's just more complications there. So if you leave it loose and only screwed together, then it's gonna be easier to work through. I ended up making these recessed drawer pulls, and this is where I used my Shaper Origin to cut these out. And I made a separate video on this, so this is just a quick kind of overview of what it looks like. But basically, it created some pulls so I didn't have to have any kind of knobs that stick out. And these recessed ones are really nice because it keeps that clean front look to the overall cabinet. And then it's just time for a finger pull test drive and doing some kind of last minute touches. So I need to do a little sanding and then some caulking of the inside to make sure it looks all pretty. And then it's just time to bathe this thing in Osmo. I've been kind of vacillating between Rubio Monocoat and Osmo and of late I've liked Osmo. I kind of like how the finish feels over time. I don't know if that's my application process, but that's what I've liked. And then that last step is just to remove the drawers one last time and cut some holes for the printer. And then this puppy is done and ready for the office reveal. And there you have it. There's the office cabinet build. Thanks for watching.